I'm audible. Yeah. Yeah. You're very much audible. Doctor, please please start. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, welcome. Start. Please. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you, uh, organizers, uh, Professor Patrushaki, Parmukar sir, and others for giving me this opportunity to talk in this platform. Uh, I've been asked to uh, talk on this topic, neutropenia, when and how to treat. First of all, uh, uh, to define neutropenia, So uh, I will be discussing on these topics uh, by I will be going into the definition first, then uh, subsequently on, on this topic, I'll be uh, highlighting the, the whole thing. By definition, uh, the neutropenia says that when the absolute neutrophil count is less than 1,500 per microliter, it has some grading system. Uh, as you know, the lower limit of normal of ANC is 1,500. It is called as grade one neutropenia. When the neutrophil is less than 1,500, uh, up to 1,000, it is grade two. Subsequently, up to 500, grade three, and less than 500 microliter of ANC is grade four, which is called severe neutropenia. Agranulocytosis is another term when the ANC is less than 200 per microliter. The Another term is called pseudo neutropenia. When uh, we draw a sample uh, for uh, and keep it for long, then uh, sometimes it uh, it shows that the, the neutrophil count is less than the normal. Some paraproteinemias and uh, all, uh, also this anticoagulant therapy sometimes may present with neutropenia. These are called pseudo neutropenias. Now coming to the basic mechanism of development of neutropenia. The three, there are three basic uh, mechanism of uh, neutropenia, development of neutropenia. First one is decreased neutrophil production and differentiation, maybe due to uh, some infiltrative, bone marrow infiltrative diseases or radiation therapies or some sort of uh, chemotherapies. The second one is uh, redistribution of circulating neutrophils to the vascular endothelium or to the spleen when there is some endothelial insult. And third one is immune destruction. Immune destruction, some, some, I'll come into the details of which type of immune destruction causes neutropenia. Uh, clinical presentation, often patient presents to us with uh, ulceration of oral cavity and mucous membrane, some skin, uh, uh, skin ulceration and perianal areal uh, uh, ulceration may be seen. Commonly, the endogenous bacterial flora gets entry, gets access to the uh, blood when there is disruption in the mucous membrane that can cause endogenous in, uh, infections by the endogenous bacterial flora. Now, coming to the causes, some are acquired causes, some are congenital causes, congenital causes like Kosman syndrome, cyclic neutropenia, neutropenia with phenotypical anomaly, et cetera, are present. Acquired uh, neutropenias can be found when there is infection, mostly the viral infection can cause a short lasting neutropenia. The drugs and chemicals are another causes, another important causes of uh, development of neutropenia, and subsequently uh, nutritional immune neutropenia, filthy syndrome, complement activation. These are the uh, uh, other acquired causes of development of the neutropenia. Infections, uh, uh, as I mentioned, mostly the viral infections that can cause neutropenia. However, some bacterial infection, fungal, protozoal, especially malaria, and typhus fever caused by rickettsia that also can. Uh, produce neutropenia. Uh, the mechanism by which the viral infection causes neutropenia is the direct marrow infection and production of autoantibodies. This can cause dangerous clinical illness when the when it persists for more than three days. Bacterial uh, neutropenia most commonly by gram-negative endotoxin producing bacteria that can cause uh, uh, bacteremia followed by neutropenia. Uh, special population like neonates, undernourished alcoholic persons are vulnerable for development of this sort of endotoxinemia and subsequent neutropenia. Rare cases with progressive neutropenia and overwhelming neutropenia may benef uh, benefit from GCSF like therapies. Uh, other agents, I'll uh, skip. Drug induced uh, neutropenia are there. Uh, this is a very important cause of development of neutropenia. 
uh, it is usually immune mediated sometimes dose dependent inhibition of granulopoiesis can be seen direct toxic to myeloid precursor or marrow microenvironment also may precipitate this sort of neutropenia uh, this immune mechanism can be by the heptin induced antibodies and the drugs like ptu anti thyroid drugs anti seizure uh, anti epileptic drugs that also are culprits for development of this the dose dependent suppression usually found in uh, persons who are getting valproic acid carbamazepine pin for a uh, long time beta lactam antibiotics are also uh, can be produ uh, are uh, um, causative agents for development of uh, dose dependent neutropenia direct uh, marrow damages can be seen when there is captopril induced agranulocytosis is especially in persons who are suffering from renal insufficiency cumulative doses of phenothiazine also may cause these things uh, the onset or time of onset of the drug induced neutropenia may vary from uh, 3 to 56 days however mean 12 days has been identified uh, even uh, even sometimes it is 1 to 2 days with some few drugs the diagnosis can be made by uh, seeing the uh, marrow findings when there is hypocellularity uh, with maturation arrest and hypercellularity with increased myeloid precursors diagnosis only can be uh, uh, seen made by based on recognition of agranulocytosis during drug therapy the treatment of this thing is withdrawal of drug if possible and with withdrawing the drug uh, within 3 to 4 days uh, the uh, neutrophil comes up to the uh, usual normal level however gcsf indicated only in refractory cases when there is uh, uh, persistent neutropenia after 3 to 5 days immune induced uh, similar to aih and ipa uh, it is uh, caused by neutrophil specific antibody this can occur with or without cytopenia however most hna are known molecules these are the uh, hnas primary immune or secondary from broader immune immune specific to single hna suggesting primary clonality disease grape disease can uh, associate can be associated with clonal antibody clinically anc uh, is in this case anc is usually less than 500 marrow usually shows hypercellularity with lack of mature neutrophils <laughs> only demonstration of neutrophil antibody can help with diagnosis the uh, examples of immune neutropenia are neonatal or autoimmune neutropenia autoimmune neutropenia and large granular lymphocytosis uh, i will not go into the details the felty syndrome uh, as we, as we see in persons suffering from rheumatoid arthritis with severe type when there is pneumomegaly along with pancytopenia special and neutropenia is obvious finding the mechanism by which this sort of uh, uh, neutropenia can be developed is anti neutrophil antibody and uh, immune complex causes neutrophil adherence to vessels and sequestration in marginal pool fast mediated apoptosis and other mechanism like impaired myelopoiesis destruction by uh, uh, large spleen or splenomegaly other causes like complement activation splenic sequestration uh, can cause this uh, uh, neutropenia relate uh, the splenic sequestration related to spleen size and marrow response this rarely causes severe infection congenital neutropenia however the disease uh, starts from the um, uh, ch childhood but usually presents lately in the adulthood when there is graying of the hair and um, uh, recurrent infection uh, can be there by which retrospectively the patient can be diagnosed as congenital neutropenia approach i'll uh, be speak, skipping these slides uh the principles of management of uh, neutropenia is there management of infections and other emergencies should not be delayed by evaluation of the cause of the neutropenia so uh, management should be started fast uh, before and uh, before you uh, go to the evaluation all patients regardless of level of absolute neutrophil count with findings of sepsis hemodynamic instability or other clinical emergencies require hospitalization and evaluation patients with an uh, anc count of less than 500 or orisham findings um, on blood smear should be evaluated immediately after hospitalization asymptomatic patients with anc of 500 to 1000 and no orisham findings on blood uh, uh, should repeat a cbc within 1 to 2 weeks 
followed by outpatient evaluation if neutropenia persists. Asymptomatic patients with moderate neutropenia with ANC count of more than 1,000 and no worrisome findings on blood smear should have repeat CBC and differential count within two to six weeks, followed by outpatient evaluation. The, uh, the hot topic one is febrile neutropenia. Uh, it is, is, a, it is a medical emergency. Febrile neutropenias are called when the uh, ANC count is less than 5,000 5, or when the ANC count is less than 1,000 and decreasing trend of uh, towards less than 500 in next 48 hours. And another thing is fever of 38, oral temperature of 38.3 degrees centigrade or 38 degrees centigrade over one hour. Uh, if, if these, are, these are the um, characteristic of febrile neutropenia. With this febrile neutropenia, we should uh, assess the risk of the patient. High risk patients are those who are inpatient uh, unstable or significant with significant uh, medical comorbidities when there is severe ANC of less than 100 microliter 100 per microliter and prolonged uh, ANC prolonged neutropenia for more than seven days when there is hepatic or renal impairment and development of uh, pneumonia or grade three for mucositis complex infection these are the patients of high risk group and they should be admitted before uh, giving um, uh, and uh, subsequently we should give the therapy the low risk patients are out outpatient uh, status with without any comorbidities, short duration of neutropenia, and no hepatic or renal impairment. The antibiotic consideration usually we give the ESBL, MRS, a VRE uh, site of infection. We should always assess whether it is retroperitoneal or some uh, if, if it is in the face or uh, danger area of face, then we should uh, take it seriously. Broad spectrum uh, antibiotics should be should be in use, which is which may be which should be bactericidal activity. We should have bactericidal activity and anti pseudomonal coverage must be given. The IV monotherapy, if we choose, in, uh, in, we can choose imipenem, celestino, or meropenem, or piperacillin tazobactam, or cefepime. With septagidin, uh, septagidin, this, this antibiotics can are the choice. Uh, combination therapy. Uh, should be uh, the therapy should be combined when the, with amin aminoglycoside and anti pseudomonal penicillin beta lactamase inhibitors aminoglycosides uh, and extended spectrum cephalosporin <coughs> levofloxacin plus anti pseudomonal penicillin when we need to when we are supposed to choose any uh, quinolones the levofloxacin should be the drug of choice oral therapy with ciprofloxacin amoxicillin clavulanate or clindamycin can be given uh, ciprofloxacin should not be given if previous ciprofloxacin uh, prophylaxis has been used. Follow-up should be uh, done uh, within three to five days. Um, if the patient, if the neutropenia uh, persists for more than five days, uh, we should consider antifungal therapy. Initial regimen should continue until ANC is more than equal to 500 per microliter and with increasing pain. Therapeutic use of growth factors when a person is having more than 65 years of age, prolonged uh, and severe uh, ANC, uh, decrease in ANC, sepsis syndrome, pneumonia, and invasive fungal infection. These are the indications where we should go with GCSA. Thank you for your presence here.